Hey folks, welcome to Market Technical Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leader in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. Today, Thursday, August 7th, 2008. Well, it was a down day on Wall Street today, and we had talked about the possibility of this happening being very strong yesterday in yesterday's video. And we can draw attention back to yesterday's video where we talked about a gap fill on the NASDAQ, a topping out pattern on the SPY and the S&P, and just an overall overbought near-term situation in the markets. And that's exactly what we were looking at based on our calculations, our 5 to 7 calculated uh, proprietary indicators and technical indicators as we just use the technicals type of stuff to calculate overbought, oversold, rally, turn dates, and so forth. And that was exactly what it was showing yesterday. And we did get that pullback today. The S&P was down 23, the Dow down 224, and the NASDAQ down about 22 to 23 points today across the board. Now, what led the decline we're going to look at today, we're going to also look at the keys and charts. And I really want to do multiple time frames today because as we come back, which we've been expecting now since yesterday's video, we called for it today, uh, a good probability of a pullback. We do see a little bit more downside, but not a whole lot. I mean, there could be a little bit more here, but then there should be starting next week, you know, mid-ish, early, mid to next week of another possible move to the upside. And we want to calculate that in and look at key supports that this market could come down to prior to that move. So that's what we're going to look at today, folks. Uh, but again, an overall downdraft on Wall Street as financials really led the fall today. AIG news yesterday after the bell was pretty ugly. This morning you had retail sales, Walmart getting hammered today. Uh, it was just an overall ugliness out there in the market. Oil was up a little bit today, but nothing drastic. You're expecting oil to bounce every once in a while here on the big downdraft that we've seen. So let's take a look at the chart on the intraday ES future, futures here. And what I just want to point out here is that you basically saw the market treading water all day until right around 2.30, 2.45 in the afternoon. So oil was trading in a sideways motion here, and you saw the basic move up and down and oil reflected in the market. All right, so early in the day, the markets were down here a little bit as oil was up about $2.50. And then oil started to slowly come in. And you see right here is where oil actually went negative on the day. The USO actually went negative, And the markets were able to push up. But look at all this resistance. You got the moving averages, the 50 moving average here, the 200 moving average right here. And that's a lot of energy to get above those moving averages, especially on a day after so many up days. You had two days of up days where the NASDAQ was up something like 95 points. You got to have a pullback in this market. We've been calling for that there since yesterday's video. So keep an eye on that, folks, and we will continue to follow it. But what you did see here is oil did spike into the close and close up over a dollar, which happened right at 2.30. Then you got a little bit of a pause action, which is those of you that have taken our webinar, and hopefully the rest of you will take it over the next couple months as we do more and more with the new website. You see, you notice this flag pattern here, which is a key flag pattern setting up for another downdraft. And when that downdraft came, it was pretty ugly in all fairness. You saw a relatively hard sell-off for the rest of the day right into the close. Right before the close, you got a little bit of a bounce here. And you can see that. That's just a technical short covering bounce, it looks like, into the close. One thing I would point out on the intraday chart is that you basically did bounce at the double bottom here. And I want to show you right on this chart. Here's the candle that pierced the double bottom. And remember how we always talk about... Uh, them taking out the lows of any chart before rallying it. They actually spiked it all the way down here, taking out all the stops, only to rally it back up before it started to sell again. And that often happens, and I pointed out in multiple videos. And it's oftentimes a decent scalp play there for a quick in and out uh, once they break the low. So once it goes below here, somewhere down this range, buy for the little bounce back, uh, back above that even number or that break of that support line at the double bottom. But as you can see, that really didn't, it did it quickly. It, all it was giving you was a scalp there. And then the market started to sell again. It basically hovered for two candles right around that double bottom. But then here really broke down to make a new low of the day on a strong sell candle on pretty heavy volume. The overall volume today was light though. And uh, you know, it picked up in the afternoon on the sell off. But for the most part, it wasn't a dramatic for the, for being down 225 points on the uh, Dow. It wasn't a huge volume day. You did, basically did 2 million contracts, which is, you know, lightish to average volume out there. And uh, what I now want to do is flip over to the S&P chart, and I want to go to the 60-minute S&P and just kind of look at some various patterns developing. Because 
We're now talking about a pullback in this market, uh, continuing maybe, but again, it's gonna. We're looking more for a flattish to slightly lower day tomorrow, or just a flat day in general. You know, it may not even be that much of a down day. It could be a tiny up day, but overall, a, a kind of that pause day we always talk about after a monster move. And then we'll look at next week, probably in tomorrow's video on Friday, and see when does it look like we may have another move up in this market. Now, one thing I would like to point out in the 60 minute here, you have a little bit of an M pattern formation. But you also have some support lines we can draw in on the 60 minute. Number one, here. All right? So you can connect the lower points here. Now, look at where this is coinciding on the 60 minute chart. Should we sell off right into this area, you're also coming into support at the 200 moving average on the 60 minute, in which, which coincides with my trend line that I just drew in here. That's going to be very, very good support on the 60 minute chart. All right. From that point, then we'll reevaluate. Do we see a bear flag pattern, a bull flag pattern develop? Do we see a bottom possibly in? Uh, we'll have to look at that tomorrow depending on if we get there or not. I don't know if we'll get there. Uh, again, I'm looking for more of a flat day. Flat day tomorrow more than anything. Maybe slightly down, maybe slightly up, but overall not that drastic. I'd be, I'd be a little surprised on a Friday uh, in the summer, especially how light the volume's been lately after the big sell-off today if we get a big down day or a big up day. Now, the one thing that could change that, and this is the caveat, guys, so allow this to be open in the market, and keep in mind that I am saying this caveat to that whole thing, should a financial stock come out tomorrow and say, you know, we're going to take a, a, a huge write-down or something drastic like that, well, then that changes the whole game. But if everything stays the same from today, I would look for a flat day. Alrighty, now let's, let's expand this even more here, because I want to actually go into the 180-minute chart uh, to give us an even broader view of this market. So let's flip out to the 180, which is basically three times the 60 minute, and we'll take a look. All right, now one thing I am seeing here is you have uh, interesting little patterns developing here, and you can see the resistance point right up here. All right, this is major resistance. There's no doubt about it that this is where the market's hit resistance three times now, and each time it's pulled back pretty hard, today being the uh, third time there that we've had a pullback. So we'll keep in mind in that regards to that resistance point. We pointed that out on the daily chart yesterday that we were at resistance. Uh, on the downside, you can even draw a bigger trend line in at this point. And this down, down, downside average here would be a very, very good support should it hit. But again, if this line were to break, that's going to yield a whole new possible downside on this market. So it's something we have to watch for. All right, As of now, it looks like we'll hold it or maybe not even get to that point. But we also want to note that should this break to the downside and we trade down here, you could actually be looking at as much as a, a double bottom fall down to this point down here. Uh, first resistance would be in this range, though, obviously. Okay? And drawing in just, I mean, support lines. Excuse me. Those are support lines. So, obviously, first support would be this point, second support, third support, and final double bottom support on the near-term 180-minute chart. All right, now again, the pattern here is a very unique pattern as you're hitting the upside, but you're also hitting the downside. And this is basically creating a wedge pattern for those of you that like the wedge. We're not a huge fan of the wedge pattern, but it's really just you're looking at breakouts of support and resistance. Here's your resistance, here's your support. Which way does it break? Whichever way it breaks, you expect more of that move to, to kind of accentuate itself to the downside. So keep that in mind, guys. I'm going to now flip to the daily chart of the SPY, and we'll take a look. And you can see that same type of pattern formation here, guys. I mean, it's not no brain, no rocket science here to draw this in. We talked about this being resistance. We talked about the 20 being support. Uh, now, we may come down and touch that 20. That'll be first line of defense, which will coincide with this line that I just drew in, which actually is pretty much this same line right here. All right? So that same line is coinciding right with the 20 moving average. After that, again, then you look for maybe a move down to that level and to that level. And obviously, long term, you're looking for a you know, possible double bottom should that break. But that's, again, well, that's so far in the future. Let's focus on the near term because that, let's, let's face it. I want to make money tomorrow, not in a week. I mean, I want to make money in a week too, but rather tomorrow, then we'll look at the next day and the next day after that. On the upside, should this break out, first stop would be this moving average right here, the 50 moving average, which probably we do believe will break out and hit. It may even go higher. We'll have to analyze that. But today, financials really killed the market. It was all about financials. Oil played a little bit of a role, again, uh, being up on the day, putting a little pressure on the market. But oil's pulled back so far at this stage that it's not as big a concern unless it starts spiking five, ten dollars Then all of a sudden, the market's going to freak out about it again. But right now, it's all about financials. AIG, we'll look at that chart. AIG just got pummeled. Look at this gap. Here's where it closed yesterday. Here's where it closed today. All right, right down here. Down $5.25. The XLF, and look at this. I mean, you look at the XLF, it basically had a rally from here to here, and you know this is definite resistance right up in this range. 
and then the fall today. So it's like not it doesn't really take a, a lot of analysis to understand the probabilities here. Um, the technical terms about finding exact turn dates and what the market will do tomorrow and so forth can really come from the proprietary stuff and the calculations we do on price pattern time and psychology. But nonetheless, good fall in the financials today, which buoyed the SKF. And I want to highlight this chart because let me put in my 200 moving average. Notice how we called for the bounce right here on the SKF, and look at the bounce you got. Then we said, all right, well, this trade's pretty much done. It's just yielded you a huge move. You come back down, you sit on that same support again, you can generally expect a small bounce. Not as big as the first one. You never want to anticipate that size, but you get a little bit of a bounce, and SKF was up again $9 right off this 200 moving average. So just understanding moving averages, you can really play a good role in, in making you money over the course of an index, a stock, a you name it, it'll probably work. You just have to understand, you have to make maintain stops and you have to be careful and all that stuff but that's what the webinar is for to teach you some of these proprietary techniques and again we will be doing more of those uh, come join the chat room folks definitely come join the chat room fin phenomenal it was a uh, you know an interesting day today it was a lot of slow kind of dribble down effect until the afternoon sell off but nonetheless a fun time in that chat room also come join the swing trade alerts and email us if you have any questions have a wonderful day folks look for a flattish day tomorrow to slightly lower maybe we'll talk to you then